away. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. Got a good book for you to uh, hear more about. Uh, the book is called The Orphan's Tale, and um, the author has uh, quite an extensive history, and perhaps some of this history plays into the story in the book. Uh, Pam Jenoff is the author. She is an historian. She worked at the Pentagon and as a diplomat for the State Department handling Holocaust issues in Poland, and uh, this story actually takes place place in World War II. Um, I will let her tell the story, but it, it just, uh, it's just a great story. Let me let her talk. The Orf- Orphan's Tale. Pam Genoff. Good morning, Pam. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Where, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm in New Jersey, just outside Philadelphia. Oh, all right. Um, d- is any of this story true? This story was inspired by two stories. Um, one was a horrific account of a Boxcar, the train of unknown infants, and these were babies headed yeah. to a concentration camp, too young to know their own names. Oh and the gosh. other was an up- an uplifting, remarkable story I discovered of a German circus that had sheltered Jews. Oh, oh, so that part is real. There was a German circus. Oh yeah. my gosh! And and the, tell the story. I, I mean, I don't want to give too much away if it's going to ruin the book, and that I'll let you call that shot. But the baby train is is an important part of this because one baby in particular. I'll let you explain if you think. Yeah, so my book is about Noah. She's a young Dutch girl, about 16, and she's been kicked out by her own parents after becoming pregnant by a German soldier. She's living above a rail station, cleaning the station to earn her own keep, when she makes a horrific discovery, the train of unknown infants. And in a moment of impulse, she rescues one of the babies and uh, flees into the night. And she finds shelter with this German circus that has rescued Jews. Wow. Isn't it just, isn't it just so ugly to think, to think that the thinking at that time was that her baby, because it was a German-fathered baby, is worthy of life. And the, all these other babies, because they're Jewish babies, they're not worthy of life. Isn't, isn't that... Oh, my gosh. And that's kind of what you've dedicated a part of your life to anyway with the Holocaust uh, stories, right? Uh, yes. Well, I was a diplomat for the State Department in Poland working on Holocaust issues about 20 years ago, and I became very close to the survivors. So wow. my books I regard as love songs to the people who lived through that most difficult of eras. The uh, the idea of taking a baby, of course, would sound bad to most of us. But in this case, this baby survives, and um, and and then there's another part where she has to actually be an aerialist. Is that right in in the circus? Well, when she when she lands with the circus, no pun intended, but when she winds up at the uh-huh. circus, the circus owner says that she can stay, but in order to do so, she needs to become part of the act to blend in, and so oh he gosh. decides that she should become an aerialist on the flying trapeze. So Noah has to learn the trapeze from Astrid, who's a professional aerialist from a Jewish Jewish circus family. And, and did you live, I don't mean live this literally, but I mean, as you're telling the story, does it, do you find yourself there? I mean, do you find yourself going back to that era and and the, those uh, horrible circumstances that certain people were put through Jewish people specifically uh, well, well certainly I refer to the orphan's tale as the book that it broke me to write because you know in order to do this justice I felt like I was going to have to metaphorically put my own three small children on that train and so incredibly oh, oh difficult God. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? Now you wrote The, the Commandant's Girl. Um, I'm just guessing from the title that's also a World War II book? Yes, The Orphan's Tale is actually my ninth book. So The Commandant's Girl was my very first, and, and, and several of mine are set during World War II. And do you, do you, do you know why? I mean, why, what is it about that era that attracts you? Well, personally for me, it's my connection to the years I spent working on it when I lived in Poland for so long and all of those survivors. But if you look around us now, uh, you know, I'm a consumer of many of the wonderful books that are being written set during World War II. And I think it's so popular. First of all, um, a lot of archival material that became available to us sort of after communism, I think spurs the stories. A lot of research is now available. It's also important to capture and tell these survivor stories while they are here because they're getting up their age and world war ii is just really fertile ground for storytelling and you also have this um uncanny friendship uh love-hate relationship at first between noah and astrid 
Yeah, so when Noah comes to the circus and Astrid is tasked with teaching her the trapeze, Astrid is none too happy about this. You know, she doesn't think Noah can do it. Uh, she doesn't like Noah or think Noah is telling the truth about who she is and where she's come from. And she feels that Noah brings unwanted attention to the circus. So um, she's not welcoming at all. Uh, the the book is called The Orphan's Tale. It is uh, written by our guest Pam Jenoff, and uh, it, the, it's funny. We had an, uh, earlier this morning we had another author talking about a, a World War II story. I guess today's world well, it's Holocaust Remembrance Week. That's yes. that's part of it, right? Um, and I believe yeah. we have a Holocaust survivor speaking, or was that yesterday, Robin? Yesterday, yesterday we had a Holocaust survivor speaking at the one of our local venues here. Yes, well, you know, this, it's an incredibly important story, um, especially today. You know, I, I certainly didn't set out to write something that was um, commentary or, you know, timely, but right. w- we both have the historical significance, but also important questions today about refuge and sanctuary as well. Have you, have you had feedback from anybody who, even though it's a novel, recognizes the story? Was there anything similar to this that may have surfaced even after the b- fact that you wrote the book? Yes, so about three weeks ago, I received an email from a woman. Um, her aunt had been the actual aerialist that inspired my Astrid character. Oh, really? And, um, it, yeah, this is about three weeks ago. The, the, uh, the aerialist herself has since passed away, um, but her niece, who cared for her, uh, wrote and thanked me for the book. Oh, my gosh. Was that, that must have been totally out of the blue. You didn't expect that at all. Super unexpected. I had no clue. I wish I had known her while I was writing the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe and maybe you captured it in a way that was kind of, uh, I don't know, so, some supernatural in a way, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you've done a most excellent job uh, portraying the um, world from when you could have trust in people to through this story now, where people find it hard to trust and they're always afraid of betrayal, so they don't want to open up to others. They want to stay within themselves. Yes, yes. Um, I, I view this book about, it's really about finding home in the least likely of places. And so that's the story that still applies today. I mean, this it's a World War II story, but ev- even if you switch a few things around, we can all uh, uh, relate to a lot of what you're saying in the book. Uh, that's my goal. That's my goal, to have it both be historically significant but also modern, r- relevant in a modern context. Yeah, especially somebody who feels outcast or somebody who feels not included. Uh, I'm guessing that this is relatable to everybody in, in that regard. Yes. In, indeed, and you had used the word sanctuary. I, I know now we've, we're having the sanctuary cities popping up in the news because of the uh, immigration and things, and it's just really, really hard to uh, do what's right, but yet to preserve life. Yes, I mean, I continually ask myself if I had been alive during World War II as, and an ordinary person, what would I have done? And I really like to explore the gray area, areas in people and their varied responses, both individual and community, to a situation like this. A few years ago, there was a, an old Nazi in the news, and um, I, I remember seeing a visual on YouTube or something, and it showed... A Nazi. I, I guess it was a reenactment, obviously. I don't know. But he took a baby that had fallen off a train and, and just took it by the legs and smacked its head to kill it uh, on the ground or on the train itself. I can't, I can't remember. And it, it's, oh my gosh, th- they were so unbelievably heartless. And, and to believe that people aren't really people and think that that's okay to. I wouldn't even do that to a dog. I mean, to, oh my gosh. Anything. Wow, what a, what a and, and it's an amazing chapter in our history. And and the amazing part about the ugliness is that there's always something amazingly beautiful that came out of it, and the goodness of good people in the face of all of the bad things that were going on. Maybe, maybe that's the more relatable part of this. Uh, the Orphan's Tale is the book. I have a copy of it. If you would like the one that was sent to me, uh, just call me right now. I'll leave it for you. I know you got to go, Pam. But do you have a website you can tell us about? I do. It's Pam Jenoff, P-A-M-J-E-N-O-F-F. At, uh, P, I'm sorry, it's www.pamjenoff.com. But I also encourage readers to find me on Facebook or Twitter or wherever they are hanging out online. All right. Well, I think I'm going to do that right now. Uh, Pam, thank you for being on the air with us today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We will be right back. You're going to love your new windows and the immediate energy savings when you work with Renewal by Anderson. 
You'll experience legendary quality installation. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com for a free in-home consultation with the pros. Right now, save 20% on every window and door, plus 20% off installation. No money down, 0% interest, and zero payments for 12 months with approved credit. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com. RenewalByAnderson.com. Offer ends April 30th. License CGC 1524135. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Wednesday, mostly sunny and warm. Highs in the low 